we've followed this documentation focused on Android. And we will also look at it for iOS and, and Windows Phone. Uh, we'll come back to that. But what we've got, the result is, in that Outputs folder, was the release-ready version of your app. There's then an uncompressed, unencrypted version that you can ignore, and then the debug versions that have been created every time we did a build. So I said, of course, Android release APK, that's the file. I copied it to my flash drive, and that's the one I'm going to use to do the uploading. So I've got my, my project right there. This is, uh, this is the actual file of the app to upload. Now if we go over to the web, let's go to developer.android.com. Early on in this class, I mentioned we can create these projects that can be deployed to all the devices, basically all the app stores. But the speed bump, one of the speed bumps, was cost. It's not free. For Android, you see when we, when we come here, we have this Play Console at the top right. And I'll only go up to this screen here, which is really nothing to look at. But here in the Play Console, it's going to ask you to sign in. And eventually, it's going to ask you, OK, great, you want to be an app developer. Take out your credit card, and we're going to pay, I think it's $28, and you're a developer. You can publish. I'm not going to require that for this class. I did say that for the for one of the final assessments is to see your app on the App Store. Technically, I didn't say your app on the Google App Store, because it costs $28, and you know that's the price of a nice pizza, but I'm not going to ask you to pay for this because we have an alternative. We have also, have you heard of this little website called Amazon.com? You can also upload your Android apps here for free. The one at the Google uh, site, $28 one time fee to publish your apps, even if your apps are free. If you're selling your apps 99 cents or 2.99 or 10.99, whatever, it costs you $28 one time to create an account and publish here. To go over to the to the Google Play Store, $28, not so expensive, but this class is completely free, so I'm not going to ask you to create a paid account here. I'm going to ask you instead, and together we'll do this, we're going to create a free account at Amazon. Because Amazon also has an app store. If you look here on Amazon, all uh, apps and games. There is also a whole Android app store on Amazon that you might not have heard of. Now, Solomon is not here today to show off his Kindle, but if you've got a Kindle, that is an Android powered device and it's just Amazon's version of, of Android. So Amazon has a whole app store. Here I just searched for social media and it gave me 4,000 results. It gave me all of these apps which are probably also found at the Google Play Store. So this is where we're going to create, see there's Pinterest. Pinterest has got their app and Vine is here and Kick and all of these. So they're on Google Play, they're on Amazon App Store, they're on iTunes App Store, they're on Windows App Store, there's the Twitter, the official Twitter account, the official Twitter app. So many companies nowadays are putting their app on all the platforms because they want to reach everyone, especially if they're paid apps because they want to profit as much from everywhere. Well, Amazon, even though they're the bigger app store, they do have one uh, downside in that if you have an Android device basically built in on your home screen, you have Google Play right there on the home screen. Go get more apps. If you're on a Kindle device, on a Kindle, it's got right here, Amazon App Store, go get more apps. 
on an Android device, I don't have the the and I don't have the Amazon App Store built in. I can download it and then get all of the Amazon apps. So that's one of the one of the downsides here. Yeah, we can put our our apps here, but a person has to first get the Amazon App Store on their Android and then they can get the app. And I think that'll be fine for us here because again, I'm not going to ask you to pay $28 to create the the Google Play Store account. I'm also not going to ask you to go buy the uh, the iPhone or the iOS app account. And if anyone remembers, how much does that cost? $99 per year. So iOS, Apple, is going to ask you to pay $99 per year, even if your apps are free, to publish your apps over at developer.apple.com. So that's another of these stumbling blocks, why we've been focusing so much on Android. Well, eventually you need to pay $99 a year, even if no one's downloading your app, even if you're giving it away for free. You need to pay $99 for your app to be visible on the App Store for Apple. Another is you need the Apple hardware. You need the uh, some MacBook to run the Apple SDK to convert the code in Visual Studio over to an iPhone app. Well, we need an i we need a we need a Mac computer. We don't have Mac computers, so I think that's why focusing mostly first on Android is the better tactic because it's it's all about writing the HTML, JavaScript, CSS, learning Cordova, learning Visual Studio, and then I will come back to how do we get to those app stores of Apple and such, but there's a really high bar. $99 to get your developer account on Apple. You need Apple hardware to get the best result, so we're focusing on Android. And we're focusing on the Amazon App Store because it's totally free. They want Android developers to come into their ecosystem and publish their apps here. And this is where we're going to dip our toe in all of this first. We're going to create a free account right here together in a moment, and then we're going to publish that app that we just created as a real app. And again, if we're doing this just for class credit, you can make all of this up. You can make up that key store with completely fake info. You can put completely fake info in the app itself. When we create an account right here, you can make that up too maybe write it down so you can log into it again later but then eventually if you do want to publish to the real app store here you can for free and once you kinda get this idea down you will see it's very similar at the official Google Play App Store but you do have to pay twenty eight dollars or so to get in let's go to developer.amazon.com So a lot of people, a lot of, uh, a lot of regular people think of Amazon really only as a place for consumption and that I can buy stuff. First, you know, first books and then movies and then now everything, apps, diapers, everything. Well, there's a whole other side of Amazon. It's a big player in the world of apps and internet infrastructure and now voice activated assistants. So this is something else to do for fun at some point. Learn how to program apps for Alexa, their voice-activated thing that's always spying on, I mean, that is helping you all the time, <laughs> that you can call out to it. Or desktop apps, make apps uh, and games and stuff for installable on a computer. And something called dash replenishment. What is that? Build automatic reordering experiences. Okay, that's the thing how if someone constantly buys something, uh, they can get that item shipped to them quickly, something like that. But anyway, for us, what we care about is the Amazon App Store. Develop Android apps and games for Amazon Fire TV, Fire Tablet, and mobile platforms. They are going to hype and they are going to promote their Kindle devices. Amazon Fire tablets, their TV, Kindles, all of that. Behind the scenes, it's still Android. It's just their version. And here they say, OK, publish on all of our devices and mobile apps, which is everything else. You know, I've got a Motorola device, and you probably have a Samsung, and you have an HTC, and whatever. So whatever we publish here will be downloadable by any Android device. 
It's just that people with, a, with an Amazon branded device will be able to download it easiest, which makes sense. It's their app store, their e ecosystem, their device. So here, let's click on Amazon App Store. You'll get a lot of uh, more information, a lot more stuff to read. I'm going to go through the direct route about what we need to do, but I would recommend to read as much as possible. Always learn, always read. That is, always read, always learn. Register for a free developer account under Get Started. register for class purposes again you can make this completely fake you will need to log back into it to show me that you've done it so maybe write this stuff down or take photos or screenshots or something so why Amazon they've got a built-in brand a built-in trusted brand great 65% reach whatever whatever register now it is free to create this account and I would recommend if you are doing this for real you could use your existing Amazon account but I would recommend to create a different account separate from your personal stuff for your developer account so I've got an Amazon account that I have for buying books and stuff but I would want a different email account for this so this assumes you've got a different email address to use here. For the moment, I'm pretty sure, I've done this before, it should still work, I'm pretty sure I can do this. Fake user at fake domain.com. That should probably be fine. I shouldn't be so obvious. But what I'm saying is you can make up an account here completely. It doesn't even have to be a real address. Although obviously if you forget your password, you won't be able to retrieve it because the account is fake. Sorry, that says sign in, doesn't it? Not, not create. Create is right below it. Create your Amazon developer account. This is to sign in if you already have an Amazon account. Uh, you could use an existing one. I recommend create a new one. So your name, your email, your password, and again, all of this can be made up. I would recommend to make it up because eventually once you understand how this works you have a real app that you want to publish for real you can go through this process with real credentials no it's gonna nag you to verify but you won't actually need to do it So there's going to be a lot of fields to fill in, and I'll guide you through it, and I'll talk about recommendations and all of that, because I've done this before. I can give you the advice of what's important and what's not, and all of that real-world advice. And um, it's not complex, but it is a lot to fill in, and I'll explain it. But ultimately, we have three things to fill in, profile, info, agreeing to their distribution agreement, and payments. So you will be able to give away your apps for free. You will be able to sell them 99 cents at a time or more. You will also be able to do in-app purchases and other things. So I haven't done this in a little while, but I'm going to write a few notes on a notepad file as we do this. So distribution channels. Android.com, developer.apple.com, developer.com.
Microsoft.com. Not free. They range from around somewhere like $25 to $99, right? For us, developer.amazon.com. Price free to set up. App stores, when you publish your app, these three at the top here, fees, 30% um, of your revenue. Revenue. The revenue. These app stores will take 30% of your revenue. So if you sell a 99 cent app, if you sell a dollar app, they take 30 cents. So your $1 app gets you 70 cents. Not uh, 70 cents. Amazon is the same. So no fee to set it up, but it does take a 30% cut of the value of your app. Even on your free apps, what's 30% of free? Zero. Zero. So yeah, they still take something. Now, the the things that we're going to fill in here pretty straightforward what's what's the country where you're situated as an app developer where you're going to target in the world that's later because we can make apps that will only be available in England for example or only downloadable in Canada or exclude places we can set all that later but here it is where are you as an app developer notice some of them are required like a phone number this is something that could show up in the app stores and so if I make this up right now for class purposes that's fine but for real purposes yes it is going to ask for a phone number I would recommend that if you're doing this eventually for real and it asks for a phone number and address as a real developer eventually put a real um, address and phone number but the problem of course is I'm an app developer working out of my garage I don't want to put my home address and I don't want to put my house phone number or my cell phone number so I would recommend here for the phone number or for the address get a PO box yes that is an expense and yes that is from like 40 to 140 dollars a year or something like that but this is for your privacy and Amazon does ask for a real address and again if we agree to all of their terms and service and we put something fake they can terminate us no questions asked we didn't follow the rules and we lose our money if we were making money so a PO box is the next best thing to put in your real address for the phone number get a Google Voice number Google Voice can give you a free phone number. It's a phone number attached to an existing phone number, so it's sort of like a middleman. right? There's going to be the Google Voice number that then you can screen and all of that, and you get it for free. And if people are calling for tech support on your app, it'll call the Google Voice number, which then you can manage. Or if spammers are calling, you can go to voicemail and all of that. So it is required to put a phone number, and I'll make a fake one at the moment, but if you're doing this for real, you need something real, P.O. Box and a Google Voice number. Fax number is not required, good thing, because it's not 1986 anymore and I don't have one. Developer name or company, again, required, you can make it up. I'm using the same one that I've been using for the moment in my key store, but it can be completely different. Yeah, that's why it's we've got to think about it in those terms of privacy because it is required, it is going to be visible. So for the moment, fake info or alternative info. Developer description says it's not required, but I would recommend it to fill it in, especially if you're doing this for real. I want to put up to a possible 4,000 characters that is part of what we'll cover later on about marketing 
We're spending all of this time to create an app, time and effort. No one knows my app exists. We have to cover marketing a little later. Part of marketing are using keywords effectively to get found. If you take my other classes, in addition to doing app development, I teach a lot of marketing classes, web marketing, digital marketing, a lot of social media classes. And we'll cover some of that in this class. But if you want the deeper picture, take the other classes. But if you've heard of the concept of SEO, search engine optimization, it's the art and the science and the magic of creating content that helps you get found. This is part of that, in that I want to create content, text, and descriptions to help me get found. Because we saw that when we go to, for example, the Android App Store, someone's going to search a keyword of a particular app. Well, I need an antivirus app, so I'll type antivirus. I need a fun photo app, so I'll type photo app. In Amazon, they would do the same thing. People would be searching for apps in the App Store. So what I'm saying is, for marketing purposes, we need to think in terms of keywords that will help us get found, but not literally just writing here, app, free, amazing. You know, not writing just keywords. We'll cover this in detail. But writing complete sentences, honest, uh, sentences full of keywords that describe your company, your apps, because when people search, I want this kind of app. Oh, I, I publish that kind of app. It's in my keywords here. I might get found. So just to start touching on a little bit of this, descriptions serve to help your findability. People will search for apps, topics, content on the app stores. Therefore, if you write descriptions that target those keywords, you may, you could, you possibly will be found. So if I'm giving you this secret, all you know, 20 of you, keywords help you get found. I have bad news, but a lot of people know that. So we'll talk more in detail, of course. But here, this is why there is this whole industry of search engine optimization companies. You hire a company for your website to help your website get found. I'm yet another restaurant. I'm yet another lawyer. I'm yet another real estate agent, and I want to get found. Well, there's 20 other real estate agents, 20 other restaurants. Companies hire search engine optimization companies to do all of this, the art and the science and the magic of SEO. So just by me telling you some of these things, you're not going to become a pro at this, and you're not going to get found right away. But we're going to cover a variety of aspects. Tangibly, what I would do here, so theoretically, we're going to write sentences with keywords to help us get found. Tangibly, what I would try to write is something like, let's say I this app developer has a variety of use of useful or utilitarian types of apps. So something like focused on useful and fun apps. We offer a range of programs like comic book tracking apps, inventory. I'm just writing random stuff. And this can be changed, of course whatever you think makes sense if you've got a good idea to promote yourself. So if we've only got one app, the CBDB app, the comic book tracking app, what could you write a little bit about it here if people are searching for this? Put yourself in the mindset of a person that would want this app. A comic book collector, comic book fan, maybe a parent with kids that they want to introduce to comic books. All of that is part of figuring out who's my target audience, what do I write to find the right audience, and this is not something, honestly, you're going to pick up in one or two class sessions. 
this is why I teach a four week long SEO class um, this is why companies uh, put themselves out as professionals in this because they have a marketing background or a degree or experience because this is difficult how do I get found how do I stand out from the competition we have a range of programs like comic book tracking apps inventory analysis apps you know just putting something here I've got 4,000 characters to work with inventory analysis apps and more most of our apps are free or low cost. People love that. People are going to search for low cost inventory app. Or maybe a certain kinds of apps that I create. Because this comic book app, behind the scenes, the skeleton of it is saving data, retrieving data, deleting data, editing data, log in, log out. We're using it for the purpose of a comic book tracking app, but that's an inventory tracking app which I can rework a little bit for a restaurant or you know uh, home uh, home uh, cupboard tracking app like what do I have in the cupboard today and what do I need to buy so any kind of idea here is fine for the moment and the address stuff right here yeah it is required and yeah it will it, it'll be public so I'm gonna make this up but this is where I would put in a PO box now, Amazon might think it's shady if all of you are typing one two three fake street so uh, you type one two three four you type one two three five one two three six customer support all of this at the moment says optional but it will be required later on when you actually publish your app. So I would say to fill it in now. What it's saying here is what is an email address that will be public where people can email you for customer support? So if my real email is, you know, victor at gmail.com, that's going to be public for everyone. I can go off and create a free Gmail account and call it the name of my company. That's fine. If I want to look a little bit more pro, I can go to a place like Bluehost or GoDaddy or all of these companies and create something like support at kaijuapps.com, you know, a real .com name to look more professional. That's optional, any email address, but it will be required later. Backing up here as a real developer, put a real address, phone number, email address. So I'll say here no, personal email. Yes, new email set up for this business. Better with your domain. So no, Victor at Cox.net. Yes is fine, Victor at Gmail, or you know, Victor apps at gmail.com, even better, more professional. Um, help at victorapps.com. And that one is not free. The Gmail and Hotmail and all of that is free. Does not look professional in terms of marketing. VictorApps.com or AmazingApps.biz or whatever, that's not free. And that ranges from like $9.99 a year to like $200 a year, depending on your level of service. Yes? You can change all of this later on. Yep, all of this can be changed. All right, so what I'm doing here, uh, that'll be fine. Email, support phone. <coughs> I can put the same phone number as above. Customer support website. It's optional here, but it will be required later. So again, this is another one of these that uh, you can um, get the free or the paid versions. So support website. We can say 
Um, okay, some of these uh, providers, like I've got Cox Cable, and they give me a free website, and I think it's something like you know Victor dot uh, space dot Cox dot net, something like that. So your service provider probably gives you some web space. That's okay, although that looks very not professional. Better is buying, you know, Victor Apps. This is going over to GoDaddy, Bluehost, etc. In the middle, there are some free places. Uh, you can go to uh, WordPress.com and get a free website. You know, I believe you can get one at Wix, a basic one, and there's also Weebly. There's other ones too. Usually, what happens there, however, is you get something like victorapps.wordpress.com victorapps.weebly.wordpress.com if you want the professional looking victorapps.com that's when you go to Bluehost, GoDaddy, HostMonster, whatever and pay the $9.99 to $200 a year or whatever if you want something quick and easy you go over here it's free but it doesn't look as professional or it's not as full featured because you get what you pay for Fill this in. This can be edited later. Looks fine. Save and continue. Any questions on this screen? All right, save that. I, I took way too long and it signed me out. Oops, okay. Gotta do that again. That's for security purposes. for autofill uh, except for my developer okay I'm gonna write whatever there whatever whenever I just need to fill that in great actually does this have auto no okay so anyway I've got this first screen save and continue distribution agreement like many of these websites like Twitter or anything there's a huge terms of service that no one agree no one reads what everyone agrees to same thing here there's this huge document here that tells you you will and will not use the service for this and that basically like to create abusive uh, apps you know hate speech types of apps and all of this stuff again this is their playground if we're gonna play in their playground we've got to follow their rules so if I have a controversial app that I want to release and it, fall, and it falls against their uh, developer terms here, you know, you can't cry uh, uh, First Amendment violations because this is a corporation and not a government, so they set the rules of their corporation. So it just goes on to say you're not going to abuse the system, etc., etc. And in there somewhere it says how much they take a cut, and it says, you know, 30% even on your free apps but especially on your paid apps etc etc over here you will not put viruses and Trojan horses and malware your content will not contain viruses and it will not cause personal injury to any person or damage property and right here you get 70 percent of the profit of your apps and there's other ways there's many ways to profit here Quick note, how to get rich from your apps. So we have direct method, charge up front for a download, 99 cents and up. So you can get rich 99 cents at a time. A uh, couple
couple of other methods here. In app purchases. Initial. What's that? Candy Crush. Exactly. I've known a lot of people that have gone broke from Candy Crush. Initial app is free, more content is not. And usually 99 cents at a time, and you'll be surprised how those 99 cents add up once you've got content. So Candy Crush, you've got the first two levels or whatever, and then you want more levels because you're addicted. You want that sugar rush, so then you buy more levels, 99 cents, and suddenly you've paid $50 for that free app. Or you hear those news reports of little kids buying $500 worth of, $500 worth of apps on their parents' unlocked phone. That's another way to make money. Now, how you do this, Amazon will give you the documentation and the code of how to set this up. And Google, and Google will give it to you in Apple. Once we create an account, they will give us the documentation and explain how do you activate this in your app. And next, we've also got the one that everyone hates, but that works really well, advertising. Initial app is free. No paid content, but apps, or but ads in the app. So let's say you download this great little utility, this great little compass, and it tracks the stars and all of that. And you get a little pop-up once in a while at the bottom or somewhere that says, click here for natural remedies. So those little things that are appearing in, in an app, that's that's advertising. There's a way to set that up with the advertising code in Amazon or, or Google where ads will appear. And you have some control over what appears. Because um, obviously if a person downloaded a, you know, a nutrition app that would want to see food-related ads, if I downloaded a nutrition ad, I don't want to see you know, ads for pets. It's a different idea, perhaps but it's kind of a little hit and miss in the beginning. But advertising, that's how that guy got rich off of Fla uh, Flappy Bird. Remember that game from a few years ago that everyone loved, that little bird that was flying, Flappy Bird? He was making supposedly like $40,000 off of his game because it had ads. Because you're tapping and tapping and flying, I gotta fly, tap, 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 oops, I hit the ad. And he profited. So basically, people, you make money when you've got ads and people click the ads. Not just that the ad is there annoying the person, a person has to click. <clears throat> and there's another way here that is only Amazon specific Amazon Underground. The longer. So the app is free, it's all totally free, but the longer a person uses your app, the more you get paid. So this one is simply from app usage, and it's only at the moment on Amazon. We have to go through their extra Amazon underground setup. That's a way to, those are three and a half ways to make money off of your, your app. The, the fifth way is that then you get bought out by a, a Silicon Valley investor, but that might not be so common. So here then, uh, okay, great, I read it, I agree it, I believe it, accept. Here's payments. Most likely you will set this up later, if at all. But if you are going to make money off of your apps, such as charging for the app up front, in-app purchases, or rewards in other ways, you say yes. Do you want to monetize? Do you want to add ads to your app? Yes or no? If you turn any of these on, it will ask you for your bank information. You probably don't want to do that right now, especially if this is a fake, if this is a fake account, a fake app. But you would want to do this eventually. And it sounds like, yeah, it's very intrusive. My bank info. Well, yes. How are they going to pay you? They don't send checks. They're going to send the the money directly to your bank account. So you're going to need your bank's routing number and your account number and everything. And yeah, they will pay you once you start making money off of your app. You can change this later, and most likely you'll do it later, 
unless you have your bank information memorized to plug in right now. I'm going to save and continue. And that's it. We're Amazon App Developers. We have our developer console here now where we will manage all of the apps that we've uploaded, how many times they've been downloaded, all of the stats, uh, popularity and such. We'll keep track of downloads and profits and all of that stuff. And you do something very similar if you go through the uh, Google route or the Apple route or the Windows route, but there will be an extra screen that it says please pay, uh, you know, credit or debit card and pay for the account. So after setting up, return to developer.amazon.com to upload test distribute market and get stats for your app yes did you say you're going to save that in your yes i'm going to save all of this in the network folder later on All right, is everyone here? Does everyone have something perhaps to look at here? So there'll, there'll be announcements that appear here. System status and new updates about new um, features and such. So they're really promoting their Alexa, Alexa skills, which is their term for apps apps that run on Alexa, their voice activated thing, are called skills. Well, I want to learn how to make Alexa skills. It's all in their documentation. There's a lot of documentation. There's support. You can go back to the settings right over here to change any of this later on. 